Hey everyone, welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We're getting an update from Empress Royalty, touching base with this royalty company. Last time we had the company on the show was about a year and a half ago. So it is time to get an update on really the four major assets within the company, generating some cash flow for the company right now, right around a $50 million market cap. We are chatting with Alex Woodier Sharon, the president and CEO of Empress Royalty. Empress is traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol EMPR and on the OTCQX under the symbol EMPYF. Now, Alex, again, it's been a year and a half since we last had you on the show. At that time, I believe you had three producing assets. Now you've moved up to four. Let's first just get a general overview of some of the transactions, some of the facilities, debt facilities that you've been able to line up to continue to advance this company from the last year and a half, please. Thank you guys for having me back on. You know, in the last year and a half, as you mentioned, we've increased our portfolio from three key producing assets to now four. We invested in a company, a project called Galaxy in South Africa, owned by a company called Golconda. And that was a $5 million investment. They had a fully built plant. We provided them with the money to buy additional equipment and to do some more underground development work. And so we funded that in February, and they've been hard at work getting that equipment on its site and doing the underground development work. So that brings a fourth producing asset into the portfolio. That's now coupled with the, the other three years, Manica Gold Royalty in Mozambique, which is producing and bringing a gold royalty into Empress. We have the Sierra Antipites gold stream in Peru. Um, that is also producing consistent revenue for Empress. And uh, we also have the Talawedo silver stream, which we can talk more about later, um, which is bringing the silver in through uh, the Luca owned project in Durango, Mexico. You know, you mentioned the, the debt facility. So originally we had a debt facility with Nabari. We refinanced that and restructured that in December, also with Nabari. So we now have a $28.5 million accordion facility. Um, we have drawn down uh, three and a half to pay existing debt, and we drew down five to fund the Galaxy investment. Uh, so we have $20 million available to us to deploy into new investments that we're looking at in the portfolio. Just sort of going through the other things, you know, we've doubled our revenue um, from last year. Um, we've been bringing in some significant revenue. We've just turned cash flow positive as well. Well, let's dive into the revenue a little bit more. Uh, speak to us about how things looked in Q1 and, and then also how you anticipate revenues growing because you got a nice uh, slide in your deck that's talking about the growth, obviously, as metals prices go higher. But just how, how do things go the first half of this year and then how do you anticipate things growing? Yeah, so we've had the consistent revenue in from the Manica. Sierra Antipite, the revenue is now starting to come in from Luca. We've got revenue starting to come in from Galaxy. We're forecasting about $6 million in revenue for the end of 2024. And that's with those four increasing production, as I mentioned, Luca coming in. When we're doing that sort of pricing forecasting, you know, we're using pretty conservative pricing, but we are truly tied to gold and silver. All of our revenue is coming from gold and silver. So with current metal prices all time high, you know, we really will probably see an increase in that as well. All right, let's recap that most recent news then on Luca Mining, getting that Talueto project up and running. It was delayed for a little bit. That company even went through a bit of a management change as well. But Empress Royalty, you do hold a silver stream here. There's also some details on some catch-up payments. Again, because this mine was delayed into production, give us an overview of what we can forecast here at this Talueto silver stream. Yeah, so we have a the we had a five million dollar silver stream with Talawetto. We get a hundred percent of their silver up to one point two five million ounces, and then it drops down to twenty percent for over ten years. We worked with this company as they went through to complete construction and deferred our payments. Roughly about twenty five percent of those payments are being caught up now, and the remaining balance we spread over a 12 month period. Obviously there's been an advantage to Empress in the fact that the silver prices have, have increased. You know, we put a press release out on this just uh, last week where we were very excited to say, you know, they completed construction, that they're advancing towards commercial production and that they've also brought in a new CEO, Dan Van Holden, who really is very strong and I really believe will drive this company forward from being a development company into a serious producer. So very exciting for us to be working with them and to support them through this construction period. And we're very excited, especially with some of the new drilling they're going to be doing there. I think they're putting about doing about 5,000 meters of exploration work, which obviously benefits all stakeholders. 
Well, in a way, it's nice you waited on the catch-up payments, Alex, until silver had a higher price. So that's going to be nice for even better revenues. You also, since we've talked last, made the acquisition of the Golconda, the Galaxy project, the stream there. And we really haven't talked with you about that before. So could you give our audience an update on that particular gold stream in Africa? Yeah, this was one that we saw the opportunity. As I said, I mentioned earlier in the chat, there was a fully produced or fully built plant, and they just needed more underground development work and equipment to do that. So uh, that was one we had identified and last year, and then we funded it when the rest of the CPs were met in the end of February, beginning of March, and that equipment is getting to site now. So we're excited to see that one. They are a current producer, so revenue is coming in from them now. We are getting our gold credits, but that will increase, you know, as they start to continue their ramp up and, and getting into some higher grade ore bodies as well. So um, very excited to working with those guys. And that's been a good investment for us. And, and we'll only continue to increase, expected to continue to increase revenue coming into Empress. So looking forward on all of these assets then, the ones that are generating royalties, some revenues for you, are there any time frames that we need to be aware of? Any time periods that some of these royalties could run out on and just so people can forecast some of the numbers moving in through the next few years? Yeah, so we've got the four consistent revenue ones now coming in. Sierra's still ramping up. They're just getting the higher grade ore body. You'll see Goconda ramping up. Obviously, we're having Talawet is very much in a ramp up phase and that revenue is going to be coming in, especially with our catch up. So that'll be spread out. What we're also really focused on right now, and I brought in a new VP corporate development, Norm Pincus, to join us about six months ago as well, is really building out the pipeline. Um, we are in discussions with many groups at the moment, advanced discussions about bringing further assets into the portfolio. We are going to stay consistent with what our um, expertise is and where uh, what our what our strategy has been from the beginning. So we're looking at only gold and silver investments, um, really to be able to really take advantage and, and get recognized for that pure revenue coming in, especially as we believe where commodity prices are going to be going. We are looking at, you know, development stage or producing assets, mostly focused on development assets at the moment of using the Nabari facility, but looking at those types of opportunities, which bring immediate or near-term revenue into Empress. And we're continuing to look globally. You know, we're looking extensively in Africa and South America at the moment. We're in discussions and actually one in North America, but we're looking at different opportunities globally. And I think Empress will always have that balance Mostly looking at streams, and that's due to the ability to structure around getting the right matrix for both ourselves and our counterparty, because it has to be a win for both. It gives a lot more flexibility in the structure and allows us to also understand the growth plans of the companies that we're helping get financed. Well, Alex, I'd like to unpack a little bit further your global approach, because to your point, you know, you've taken on some jurisdictions that maybe North American investors aren't as familiar with and shown you can be successful there by backing the horses that are doing good work and maybe overlooked by some of the people that are just North America focused, maybe to speak to why you're willing to go into Mozambique or Peru or parts of Africa that are overlooked by a lot of other companies. Yeah. So, you know, it kind of really comes down to our partnership and, and sort of the origin story of Empress is, you know, my background is I'm ex-PwC. I joined a group called Endeavor Financial, one of the leading investment banking firms specializing in mining finance. As an analyst, became director of structured finance in London, involved in over 1.5 billion of deals. And, you know, working with Endeavor, we were going global, we we're globally uh, working. And we teamed, I teamed back up with David Rose, who's the managing director of Endeavor Financial, to launch Empress. As we were seeing that there were these amazing projects that needed financing, and there was no streaming company providing financing to the smaller companies or the smaller size tickets in these types of jurisdictions. And we knew how to structure them. We're going into countries we've been before. We know how to work with a legal framework. We know how to structure these deals. We understand the permitting process. It's very quick to get permitted in a lot of these countries compared to somewhere like Canada or some other jurisdictions. So that obviously is very attractive and able to capitalize on these on the gold prices. So we really are leveraging off our expertise as a management team and board to bring us into countries or going into countries where we we know how to operate and structure. You know, you look at Mozambique, and, and again, I think was necessarily familiar with it, over $16 million of um, LNG investment has gone into Mozambique. You know, the legal framework has been established and set up. So for us, we were very comfortable going in there. We were also operating with a Mozambique uh, partner who knew how to operate in country. You know, same with Peru. We went into Peru actually during the elections, but the partner group we have there was a Peruvian company 
um, open operated by Peruvians. So we knew that they, and they were very well connected within multiple facets of the government so that we knew they had the right relationships to be able to operate there. And they had, uh, you know, were outstanding local citizens. Alex, let's dig in a little bit more to your background in mine finance here, because the finance environment is still very tough for the smaller companies. Money is not cheap, and there just aren't a whole lot of groups out there that have a lot of disposable money still to finance these builds, and builds, quite frankly, are getting more and more expensive. There are a few junior royalties still in the space. We've seen some acquisitions, but one, how competitive is this environment? And two, how can a company like Empress Royalty truly change the outlook for a smaller potential producer through that development stage? So there are, you know, there are quite a few junior royalty companies out there. I think investors have multiple ways of investing in the sector. There's a lot of people who are acquiring and there's a lot of there's a lot of competition in that space. The investment bankers call and ask everyone to put bids on these deals. The money that's going to these is paying somebody else who's holding the party. It's not going into the actual project itself. So that's not really the project financing aspect. We really are just only doing project financing in the sense that we are providing the money directly to the mining company to help them either expand production or get into production. And we're willing to go into, you know, we're doing smaller investment sizes. So, you know, Wheat and the big boys are doing 100 million plus. For us, we're doing sub 25 million as our goal and sort of overall strategy. So it is taking advantage of that. We haven't been in a competitive bid process to date. You know, there are very few players in the space and it, it really is for us working with management groups known to us or we've worked with in the past with obviously the right project in countries we're happy with the structuring and be able to execute in those countries. Well, Alex, I think you do some things unique in the royalty space by the way your network works, some of the prior success your team has had, and being able to use those relationships in jurisdictions that are being overlooked. And like you say, you're not in a lot of bidding wars. So these are royalties that are not being looked at and not being generated by other companies. Now that you've got this four uh, four leg stool to stand on, and you've got four revenue generating assets for the company. How do you want people to think of the company's growth trajectory moving forward? What does the future look like for Empress Royalty? We want to continue to build this company out. We launched it with a concept. I think we've delivered on that concept and proven that strategy out with the revenue coming in. I mean, it's about 6 million US this year, going up to 10 um, on the years after that about over 50, 60 million of revenue over the next five years um, using pretty conservative pricing. So, you know, there's going to be the revenue coming in, we can redeploy. I think the idea is to diversify the portfolio and get further investments similar to what we've done before into the portfolio. You know, we're mandated up to 25 million, we'll grow into that and do larger investment sizes, still staying below 25, but, you know, building the portfolio out with further diversification. I also really feel that when, you know, and, and, a lot of that's going to come out in the proof of our financials as we deliver the financials and yet everyone's seeing the results. You know, I think there should be some re-rate there. I also feel strongly that when it's truly recognized how closely tied we are to gold and silver, that should also have appreciation, especially with the commodity prices and the equity markets coming back, back a bit. You know, we're also trading at a 50% discount to NAV. We're trading on such a discount compared to our peers. And again, that's sort of why having, you know, trying to get there on top of individuals like yourself and, and really get people to understand what Empress is about and how much revenue is now starting to come into the company and how much growth potential we have with new investments and with our current portfolio. All right, Alex. Thanks for the update here. Look, uh, numbers talk. I think you know that. We've all seen that in the market. So more revenue that comes in from these assets, that's going to help draw in attention. But as you said, you are unique in the sense that you're out there creating new royalties and streams. We'll follow along when you have some more developments, especially in terms of if any of these deals get done. Please keep us up to speed on all that. And everyone listening, if you have any follow-up questions for Alex or the team over at Empress Royalty, please send us an email and we will get those addressed. Alex, thanks again for your time. We do appreciate the update. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate your time and thanks, everyone.